opening day is tomorrow. The 2023 season's about to start, so it's time for me to drop my 2023 MLB season predictions. Wait, hold on a second. Now it's time for me to start my 2023 MLB season predictions. I mean, you think I'm not putting on the Mets jersey for this? Also, big news, starting a new baseball channel doesn't change anything over here, I promise. And that is gonna be over on my new channel called This Is Baseball. It's gonna be a live stream slash podcast channel where I will be streaming live every single day, Monday through Friday, talking about whatever happened the previous days, whatever I want to talk about in baseball. Again, it's going to be a more relaxed podcast S type setting. Go subscribe over there. It would really mean a lot to me. Now, without further ado, let's get going into those predictions you guys have been waiting for. As is tradition, let's get it started off in the American League East in fifth place. And at the bottom of this division, I think it's not really that big of a surprise. I'm going with the Boston Red Sox. They made a couple cool additions this offseason, grabbing Masataka Yoshida, bringing in Justin Turner, improving that bullpen a little bit, bringing in guys like Kenley Jansen and Chris Martin. But overall, as a whole, this team just really is not very strong top to bottom. They're lacking a shortstop. They're lacking a second baseman. Starting pitching doesn't look that great. I mean, Chris Sale's coming back, but you're relying on Nick Pavetta, Tanner Houck. Corey Kluber was like a nice pickup if you had better depth. Cutter Crawford, this rotation just isn't that strong. For a team overall, that isn't that strong. Like, I love Rafael Devers. I like Alex Verdugo. Tristan Casas, I think, is going to be a really good player, but these just aren't really champion-type players right now. And in a tough division like the American League East, I have to put the Red Sox in fifth. Fourth place in the AL East, I'm going with the Baltimore Orioles. And I really wanted to bump them up but I think they're just like maybe a little bit away from being a true playoff contender right now. The starting rotation is just simply not very good. It's filled with a lot of guys that are four and fives on most teams. While their bullpen has some really interesting arms, the starting rotation just doesn't really help them out. Although keep an eye out for Grayson Rodriguez. Eventually he's going to get the call up. Eventually he's going to be there and he's going to be disgusting. On the hitting side though, the Orioles have a really good lineup. Cedric Mullins is really good. Adley Rushman is just one of the best young players in baseball. One of the best catchers in the entire league. Anthony Santander is a completely underrated hitter. The dude's a beast. Gunnar Henderson's going to get a lot of playing time. He looks really good. Ryan Mountcastle, if he played anywhere but Baltimore with that crazy left field, will be putting up 35, 40 home runs. The dude is a beast at the plate. I know I just used the word beast like five times in this video, but the Orioles offense is very good. It's just, will their pitching be good enough to help them? I keep going back and forth, but I keep landing on no. I think they're in fourth. For third place in the AL East, I'm going with the Tampa Bay Rays. It feels dirty. It feels weird because I always believe in the Rays. I'm usually one of the few, but this year just feels different. While you still have Wander Franz, and if he's healthy, he can really change this team. But again, big if, he hasn't shown it yet. Randy Orozarena is fantastic. Brandon Lau is going to have a bounce back year. Yandy Diaz sets the top of that order, getting on base like a boss. But that's kind of it on the offensive side. A lot of question marks there. Starting pitching is obviously going to be very good. You have Shane McClanahan, who's one of the best young pitchers, just actually straight up best pitchers in the game. Zach Eflin was a really nice pickup. Jeffrey Springs, Drew Rasmussen, and Tyler Glasnow is going to come back at some point. It just doesn't feel like the same race. It feels like this could be a retooling year for them and not necessarily one that they're they're making a push for the playoffs, but they're obviously going to win a lot of games. They're going to be competitive. Do they make it into the playoffs? You'll just have to wait and see. Second place in the AL East, I'm going north of the border to the Toronto Blue Jays. I still think they're just ever so slightly behind the team in first, and I really do think it comes down to pitching, which sounds weird because the team in first has a lot of injuries, and it's not really a slight on the Blue Jays. I think their pitching is actually still very good. Kevin Gaussman, I said he was shaky. He's had a phenomenal spring. He's just adjusting to the new rules, but he's looked really good, so imagine when he feels comfortable with the new pitching rules. Alec Manoa, obviously had a great year last year, a very, very good starting pitcher. And Chris Bassett's a really good number three. He was on the Mets last year. Huge fan of his. But let's be honest, that Blue Jays lineup is one of the best in all of baseball. George Springer, Bo Bichette, Vlad Guerrero Jr., Dalton Varsho, Alejandro Kirk, Brandon Bell, Matt Chapman, Whit Merrifield and Kevin Kiermeyer. That is a phenomenal one through nine. I really like the Blue Jays roster a lot. I just can't put them in first place just yet because I think first place in the ALE still belongs to the New York Yankees, unfortunately, because I absolutely hate them. But you look at this team on paper and they look really good. Now, I did mention some of those injuries. You have Luis Severino, who's got an arm injury. It's always scary. We don't know what's going on there. Carlos Rodon's missing opening day, but I think he should be fine. And he was one of the best pickups of the entire offseason. I still stand by it. This will allow for a guy like Clark Schmidt to get into the rotation. Honestly, I don't think he's going to leave it. He's really good. Looked great in spring. They have a really strong bullpen. Clay Holmes holding it down. Jonathan Loisega, Michael King. And offensively, while Aaron Judge is going to regress negatively, like he's not going to hit 62 home runs again. He's still going to be one of the best hitters in baseball. DJ LeMahieu should be better than he was last year. Josh Donaldson 
has to be better. John Carlos Stanton will probably be better. Glaber Torres is still pretty solid. Anthony Rizzo is a good first baseman still in the league. And Anthony Volpe, I think, could be a huge X factor. I really like the fact that they're going with the young kid at shortstop on opening day, giving him a chance. So I think the Yankees are still the best team in that division and still have first place pretty much on lock. Moving to the American League Central, a little more straightforward there because in fifth place at the bottom in the basement, it's going to be the Detroit Tigers. Oh, I was so, so optimistic about them last year, but boy, oh boy, have they completely turned me. They look horrible. And you look at this roster top to bottom and you go, oh, there's just not a lot of very good players. Now I'll give you this, Tigers fans. You should be excited about Riley Green. Really good prospect. Going to have the full season there. Looks great. Spencer Torkelson's had a great spring. So maybe that number one overall pick finally, you know, he just needs a little time and he'll be ready. Austin Meadows is healthy. When he's healthy, he's very good. And Kerry Carpenter's hit the ball really well. But that's about it. Javi Baez stinks. There's just no way around it. It's just not a good team. Fifth place. Fourth place in the division. I actually have better expectations for them. I think they're going to be a lot better than the Tigers. I'm going with the Kansas City Royals. While their rotation is painfully boring and not interesting, I think it's actually solid. They have a bunch of decent pitchers. None of them are really aces, but a couple guys that could be decent starting pitchers this year, like Brady Singer. Lineup-wise, they're going to hit some home runs. They're going to strike out a ton, and they have Bobby Wood Jr. and Vinny Pasquantino who are going to carry this offense. MJ Melendez is still very good. Salvador Perez is very good, but Bobby Witt Jr. is poised for a massive, massive season. Super high on him. So while my hopes aren't high for them, I think they will be better than we maybe expect. I have the Royals in fourth place still this year. Third place in the division maybe could be a fourth place team because if one thing goes wrong, the season's over. That's the Chicago White Sox. I just have no faith in this organization. When you hire a manager like Tony La Russa, use him for way too long, I start to think you're maybe not that smart. Granted, he's gone now. That's the best thing that could have happened, but I mean, this roster is like a glass cannon. Tim Anderson, Luis Rowe, Bear, Andrew Benintendi, Eloy Jimenez. That's like a decent one through four. It's not great, but it, you can see it having some good success. Yohan Mankata, like, what are we getting out of him? Andrew Vaughn, is he going to break out finally? Is it going to happen now that he's playing first base? Yasmani Grandal looked awful. I love Oscar Colas. Super exciting prospect. Can't wait to see what he can do at the major league level. But again, there's no depth on this roster. And same thing with the pitching. Cease, Lance Lynn, Giolito, Mike Clevenger, Michael Kopech is a really good rotation. But one of those guys is going to get hurt. And when they do, their depth is not good. They are a glass cannon. The potential is there, but everything has to go perfect, and as we know in baseball, 162 games, nothing ever goes perfect, so that's why I have the White Sox finishing in third place. Second place in the AL Central, I'm giving it to the Minnesota Twins. A lot of good improvements this year, but I just don't think they're the best team in this division just yet. Bringing back Carlos Correa was big. I love the addition of Joey Gallo. I think he could have a really nice season out in Minnesota where it's nice and quiet. Even bringing guys in like Christian Vasquez and Michael A. Taylor are going to be really good for this team. Allow Byron Buxton to maybe not play center field as much or even at all. You could just put Michael A. Taylor out there, and he's a stud. Pablo Lopez, really good pitcher. I really like Kenta Maeda coming back. He looks healthy. Tyler Molly's good. Sonny Gray's good. Joe Ryan's good. This is a strong roster. It's just the Rocco Baldelli factor. I, I just don't trust him. I think he's the problem. I don't know why, but I think he's the problem. They should be a playoff team with a good manager. I think they are. This year, we'll have to wait and see. Coming in in first place, best team in the AL Central. I think it has to be the Cleveland Guardians. When you look at this roster top to bottom, they are the best in the American League Central. Pitching wise, Shane Bieber. What, what a beast. Everyone forgets about him. Still very good. Cal Quantrill, Aaron Savali. Tristan McKenzie's hurt, but he's going to come back at some point, obviously, and he's a beast. And then the bullpen is obviously lights out. Emmanuel Class A, probably the second best reliever in baseball. And the lineup is very much improved just by grabbing a guy like Josh Bell, just like bringing in a guy like Mike Zunino. They added a bunch of power, which is something that I think that they needed. Because when you look at this roster, you have a lot of contact guys along with Jose Ramirez, who's one of the best hitters in baseball. Putting some power bats around them is going to be really, really good. And I'm super excited to see what the Guardians can do. I think they have actually a pretty high ceiling this year. Let's move it on over to the American League West. Get us started off in fifth place with the worst team over there, clearly it's going to be the Oakland A's. I'm going to keep it short and sweet with them. They're bad. They're not good. Are there guys to keep an eye out for? Like, maybe on the pitching side. And Waldachuk looks like he has some legitimately good stuff, and I think Shintaro Fujinami could be interesting. The scouting report is the stuff's crazy. He doesn't know where it's going. He's going to walk a ton of batters. So the stuff is there. And that's kind of where it ends for me. I mean, Seth Brown is good. He's going to get traded. Shea Longoliers, young catcher, going to be the everyday guy there. And I don't really have much else to say about the A's. They are bad. They're the worst team in the division. It's not close. Fourth place in the American League West, and I think this is going to be a playoff contending team, the Texas Rangers. The Rangers, I think, had a really, really good offseason in the way that this team is being built. Maybe not this current year, maybe not 2023, but 2024, whew, better keep an eye out for those Texas Rangers. Signing Jacob deGrom was huge. When he's healthy, he's the best pitcher in baseball, there's no doubt. Nathan Navaldi was having Cy Young-ish caliber seasons just a few years ago. When he's healthy, he's really good. Andrew Heaney, in about 100 plus innings last year, showed us when he's healthy, he's really good. John Gray, when he's healthy, will be a great 
four or five in this rotation, along with Martin Perez, who's going to eat innings. They also have some starting pitching depth with a guy like Dane Dunning, if any of these guys go down, because inevitably one of them will. If things go perfect for the Rangers, this rotation has the chance to be the best in baseball. Offensively, Marcus Simeon, Corey Seager, Nathaniel Lowe, studs. They have a solid little team there with some really good top-end talent, just not good enough to put them above fourth place just yet for me. Third place in the American League West? God, call me crazy, but I'm a believer in the Angels. I just, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, guys. I'm doing it. I'm looking at this lineup. I'm looking at this team, and I'm starting to believe the Angels in the outfield start flapping your wings. I mean, Taylor Ward, Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, Anthony Rendon, Hunter Renfro might be the best one through five in all of baseball. It's up there. Taylor Ward is a dog. That dude is really good. And when you get to hit in front of Mike Trout and Shohei Otani, he's gonna get good pitches to see. He's gonna crush him. Oh yeah, and Mike Trout and Shohei Otani, the two best players on the planet. Those guys are healthy. I mean, this lineup's nuts. Anthony Rendon is gonna bounce back. I believe it. I believe it. I saw him swing yesterday. I, I just believe he's gonna bounce back as long as he's healthy. And then pitching-wise, Otani's a stud. Patrick Sandoval's very, very good. Tyler Anderson, a nice number three. Reed Detmers threw a no-hitter last year. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid with him. Call me crazy. I'm a believer. Now, this bullpen? Bullpen's awful. There's gonna be a lot of blown games, and this will be the demise of this team. I truly believe it. The bullpen. But I will just believe they're gonna score more runs than everyone else. I got the Angels in third place. Second place in the AL West, Seattle Mariners. I think you probably could have predicted that based on what the other positions were in this division. Mariners are still a very, very good team. You have J-Rod, who's gonna be an MVP candidate, just one of the most talented players in all of baseball. Adding Colton Wong, I think is actually going to be huge. Their infield defense will be much improved just by having him at second base. Hey, Oscar Hernandez out in the outfield or at DH in this lineup is going to do wonders for them. Even more power along with Ty France, Eugenio Suarez, big dumper Cal Raleigh. Really like the way this lineup looks and I don't know, is this the year Jared Kalanick figures it out? Starting pitching also looks really good. A rotation of Luis Castillo, Logan Gilbert, Robbie Ray, Marco Gonzalez, and George Kirby is really strong. And they have a great bullpen with great talent. Andres Munoz is just electric. Paul Seawald's been good even though I hate him and I think he's a rat. Diego Castillo, Matt Brash, Penn Murphy. They have really good arms out there. This is a really solid team and they will have high expectations this year. Playoffs for sure. And then coming in in first place, of course, is going to be the Houston Astros. No kidding. They're amazing. They're studs. They're beasts. They're arguably maybe even on paper the best team in baseball. Only the Astros would be able to lose Justin Verlander and not care because their rotation is still amazing. Framber Valdez, Christian Javier, Jose Urquidy, Luis Garcia, Keep an eye out for Hunter Brown. That is a sneaky rookie of the year pick. Maybe he's even mine. The bullpen is cash money. We don't need to talk about Ryan Presley, Montero, Brian Abreu, Hector Norris, Ryan Stanek. I talked about it. Whoops. Disgusting. And then the lineup. Oh, it's really good too, even with Altuve being out for a month or two. Jeremy Pena, Kyle Tucker, Alex Bregman, Jordan Alvarez, Jose Abreu. Like, my God, this team is so good. The Astros are amazing. Defending World Series champions, don't expect them to slow down anytime soon. Which now leads us to who I think is going to make the playoffs. One seed, I'm going with the Houston Astros. Two, we're going with the Cleveland Guardians. Three, New York Yankees. Four, Toronto Blue Jays. Five, Seattle Mariners. Six, Los Angeles Angels. Yes, I have the Angels making the playoffs. For my award predictions, let's start off with the Rookie of the Year. I mentioned Masataka Yoshida earlier, and he is going to be my pick. I think he's just a really good hitter. We saw him break the RBI record at the World Baseball Classic Tournament this past spring. Really, really high expectations for him. He just looks like he's a very, very good hitter. Probably between him and Gunnar Henderson right now, I'm going Yoshida. For the Cy Young, I honestly would have gone with Carlos Rodon, but the injury missing at the beginning of the year kind of scares me a little bit, backs me off a bit. I am going to go with another New York Yankee, though. It's Garrett Cole. He finally gets his first Cy Young. I feel like people are not respecting him enough. He's still one of the best pitchers in the game. I know he has, like, a home run problem, but so is Justin Verlander, so is Max Scherzer. I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't care about the home runs with them, and I did for Garrett Cole. You just look at him every year. He throws 200 innings, strikes out a ton of batters. He is one of the best pitchers in baseball. People don't even have him in their top 10s anymore. I think this is kind of the chip on the shoulder that Garrett Cole needed. He's a bit of a loser, but I think this is going to be really good for him that people are doubting him. Again, don't know why, because he's He's still really good. He's my Cy Young pick. And then for the MVP, it's almost impossible to not be Shohei Otani, Mike Trout, or Aaron Judge. So I'm not going to pick them. That's a cop out. I'm going to end up picking Kyle Tucker of the Houston Astros to be my fun MVP pick. He's had back-to-back -back amazing seasons. I think this is the year where you really see him take it to that next level where he becomes just one of the best players in baseball. The speed, the glove, the power, the hitting for average, everything that Kyle Tucker does is phenomenal. And I think this is the year it all comes together for an MVP campaign, especially with Altuve out now. Someone's going to step up. I think it's going to be Kyle Tucker even more. We'll talk about the playoff outcome in a little bit. Let's go ahead and move on to the National League now. Starting off with the National League East. In fifth place, we've got the Washington Nationals, clearly. Sorry, Nationals fans. There's just not a lot to look forward to with this team. It's pretty horrible. They're going to be competing.
competing with the A's for the worst team in baseball. I mean, at least you get to see CJ Abrams play every day at shortstop. He should be really exciting. Cabo Ruiz is one of the better young catchers in baseball. And Joey Manessis is going to be hitting dingers like he does. So you'll have some fun there, but the rest of the offense is bad. And on the pitching side, Mackenzie Gore. That's the guy you're looking for. Mackenzie Gore. Is he going to be that top prospect hype that we once thought? Or is he just going to be a middle of the pack back end starter? Otherwise, there's not really much conversation to have with the Nationals. They stink. Fourth place in this division, I think, is also fairly obvious while they did improve this offseason. I don't think they're going to be very good. I think it's the Miami Marlins. Their roster is built so bizarrely. They have so many second basemen on this team. It's crazy. In their starting lineup projected right now that are just straight up second basemen. Luisa Rise, Jazz Chisholm, Gene Segura, Joey Wendell. And on the bench, they got John Birdie. They do have some power, at least in this lineup, with guys like Jorge Soler and Garrett Cooper and maybe Avisel Garcia. It's not a very, very good offense. They won't strike out a lot. They're going to be pesky. Pitching-wise, definitely strong on the rotation. Sandy Alcantara is really, really good. I mean, he won the Cy Young. You know, I don't need to tell you about Sandy. Jesus lazardo has got great stuff. Maybe this is his breakout year. End of the day, you look at this team, there's just not really a high ceiling with the Marlins. I think their floor has come up, but the ceiling is very low. Third place in the NL East. I'm going with the Philadelphia Phillies. Now I know, they're coming off World Series, making it there. It was an incredible run. The Phillies are built for the postseason. As long as they get there, they are one of the most dangerous teams. I don't want to run into them. But in the regular season that we saw last year, it's a little bit tougher for them, the way that this roster is built. Especially with Harper missing the beginning of the season and Reese Hoskins being out for the year, this lineup becomes a lot weaker. That being said, they brought in Trey Turner, who is simply one of the best players in baseball. Huge improvement at shortstop over what they had. Kyle Schwarber's still there. He still hits a ton of home runs. JT Ramuto is still by far the best catcher in baseball. But does Nick Castellanos bounce back? And then you're looking at guys like Derek Hall, Bryson Stott, Alec Bohm, Jake Cave, Brandon Marsh. It's a little scary. Top end talent, disgusting. The rest of it, eh, scary. Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler could be the best one-two punch in baseball, maybe. Then you have Tywan Walker, who has not looked good towards the end of spring and we know has had a hard time in the second half every single year. Bailey Falter and Matt Strom are there four and five right now as a Philly fan. You can't feel great about this. You can't. The bullpen could either be absolutely disgusting or a complete train wreck. You saw the video before. I thought the Phillies were really close to elite. I thought they're definitely contenders. But losing Hoskins really does hurt this team. And they have no depth right now. Andrew Painter will hopefully come back for them and he's an absolute stud. But outside of that, there is little to no depth here. And that is scary for a team who already is starting the year with some injuries. So I have them in third place. We'll see if they make the playoffs. Second place, I'm going with the Atlanta Braves. I don't feel good about it, but you know what? I was respectful to the Braves last year and what did it get me as a Mets fan? Nothing. So I'm putting them in second place where I think they belong. That being said, I still think they're one of the best teams in baseball. It's just this is a crazy hard division. Ronald Acuna has to bounce back. He's too good not to. He's a stud. Matt Olson is having an unbelievable spring and he had a great season last year. Austin Riley, Michael Harris. Then you look at Marcelo Zuno. What's he going to do? I'm not sure, honestly. He hits the ball hard still, but he was pretty awful last season. Ozzy Albies is the most overrated player in baseball. I'll stand by it. He's a completely fine player, but he's not elite like everybody makes him out to be. Sean Murphy was a huge addition at the catcher spot. I think he's going to be really good in this lineup. And then you don't really have a left fielder or shortstop. Pitching wise, Max Fried and Spencer Strider, very, very good. Strong one two punch. Then you're relying on Jared Schuster, Charlie Morton, and I guess it's going to be Dylan Dodd, is what they said at the back end of your rotation. Quite Question marks there, for sure. In the bullpen, you don't have Rizal Iglesias for a little bit. I like some of their arms out there, but I don't think the Braves roster is necessarily as sick as some people are making it out to be. I still think it's one of the better ones, but I think they are second place in the National League East. And then, of course, coming in, in first place, we're going with my New York Mets. Listen, I have every reason to put them in first place. They won 101 games last year, and they might have gotten better, specifically on the pitching side. I love what they've done with the starting rotation. Justin Verlander coming in off a Cy Young Award last year, like a fine wine. He only gets better with age. I can shake the mic microphone when I say this because he's a Met finally. For those of you who've been around forever, you know how much I love Justin Verlander. He now he's on my favorite team. Max Scherzer's still there. Kodai Senga, really good. Looks interesting. Carlos Carrasco, David Peterson. Jose Quintana's out for a while. He's got some stuff going on with his ribs. Tyler McGill is a depth arm. Really like the rotation. Losing Edwin Diaz hurts, no doubt. But the bullpen was built for this. David Robertson, Adam Adovino, Brooks Raley, Drew Smith. John Curtis is going to be the sneaky good arm out there. I think the Mets bullpen is solid. It's not one of the best bullpens anymore. Losing Edwin Diaz hurts them. But I think it's definitely better than it is bad. And then the lineup is phenomenal. I don't care that they don't have more than like two guys who can really hit for big power in a Lindor and Pete Alonso. You look at Nimmo, Marte, Lindor, Alonso, McNeil, Canna, Vogelback, Eduardo Escobar, Omar Nervais with Brett Beatty coming up at some point too and Francisco Alvarez. They added depth on their bench. This lineup is really, really good top to bottom. The Mets are a good team. This isn't even Mets bias. You guys know it. The Mets are good. Mets are one of the best teams in baseball. They're winning the National League East this year. Moving on to the National League Central, getting a cert off in fifth place. I think unsurprisingly, I'm going with the Cincinnati Reds. Not a good team. Not a good team at all. They actually, funny enough, have like three really interesting pitchers in Hunter Green, Nick Lodolo, and Graham Ashcraft. The first two you know better because they're young prospects 
who are studs and have electric stuff. Graham Ashcraft apparently throws like a 102 mile an hour cutter. The bullpen stinks. The lineup stinks. There's no way around it. There's not much to talk about here with the Reds. They have a lot of exciting prospects in the pipeline waiting to come up. But if we're looking at this roster, I mean, I guess I'm interested to see if Jonathan India remembered how to play baseball. Tyler Stevenson is good at catcher. He's just got to stay healthy. And Spencer Steer, maybe? I don't know. I'm, I'm really pushing it with the Reds here. They're a fifth place team. Fourth place in the National League Central. I've got the Pittsburgh Pirates. I like them a lot more than the Reds. Their rotation is weird, but I think it's okay weird. Rowanzi Contreras, I love. I think he's going to be really good. And I'm just, I'll never give up on Vince Velasquez. I won't. Maybe this is the last chance, but he's going to do it one day. People are higher on Mitch Keller, who's thrown 100 last year. If he can figure out where it's going, that would be really useful for him. Rich Hill, great veteran out there. Got to respect him. You always tip the cap to Rich Hill. And Luis Ortiz at some point will get there, and he's a stud. Offensively, O'Neill Cruz is really fun. We all know about him. Brian Reynolds, all around, one of the better center fielders in baseball. They brought back Andrew McCutcheon because he's a good player and for the vibes. See Brian Hayes, this could be his breakout year as well. If he hits the ball in the air, he could be really sick. The lineup's not that great, but it's better than the Reds. That's just simply where they are. They are better than the Reds. Also, keep an eye out for Andy Rodriguez. Love him. He should be catching. Third place, I think competing for a playoff spot. All things have to go right for them, but it's the Chicago Cubs. Now, their bullpen is a little bit of a mess, but they have some fun arms out there, like Julian Merriweather, like Michael Fulmer. Starting rotation, Marcus Stroman, Justin Steele, Jamison Tyon, Drew Smiley, Hayden Wesneski looks good. It's not a bad rotation. And the lineup, like I can see it. Nico Horner's good. Dansby Swanson, good. Ian Happ, good. Trey Mancini, good. Edwin Rios, I love. Eric Hosmer, not so much. Cody Bellinger, who knows? There's a lot of question marks. Say Suzuki's gonna get back healthy at some point. He's really good. But I think the Cubs are the third best team in this division and will play better than people expect. Second place in the National League Central, I really wanted to put them in first. I went with the Milwaukee Brewers. The Brewers might have one of the most boring rosters in baseball, but that's also kind of what I like. And when you have Corbin Burns and Brandon Woodruff as the one-two in your rotation, I mean, anything's possible. We talk about like the Phillies one-two being dangerous. Burns and Woodruff is out of this world. They can just completely take over a series. If they make it to the playoffs, they're one of the most dangerous teams for sure. And lineup-wise, Willie Adamez is a stud. We know that. Rowdy Telez is a really good power hitter. I'm not giving up on Christian Yelich. I'm not going to be like super hyped on him, but I'm not giving up. I wouldn't be surprised if he's back. Just hit the ball in the air. William Contreras was a good power bat to add. Jesse Winker was a good bat to add. I don't know. I'm kind of believing in the Brewers a bit. I was going to give him first place. I backed off. I thought about it. They're not the best team in this division. Can't do that. But I think if they make the playoffs, this is a dangerous team. You got to keep an eye out for them. Coming in in first place in the National League Central, of course, it's going to be the St. Louis Cardinals. It just makes a lot of sense. Their lineup is disgusting. Brendan Donovan hitting the ball harder than ever. That's a really good sign. Lars Newbar, on base machine. Great world baseball classic. Paul Goldschmidt, National League MVP. Nolan Arenado, MVP candidate every year. I mean, the top three four is really good. And then, oh, we added Wilson Contreras, a catcher. Really good hitting catcher. He's a beast. And we have Tyler O'Neill, who's really good. And we have Nolan Gorman. And we called up Jordan Walker. Thank you, St. Louis. Big Jordan Walker guy over here. Glad you called him up. He deserves it. And Tommy Edmund hitting ninth, who hit the ball harder than ever last year. He was 88th percentile in max exit velo. He had a phenomenal year. Where they scare me is their starting pitching. Their bullpen, not a worry. Their bullpen solid. But their starting pitching scares me. It's just like really, really okay. Miles Michaelis? Uh, Jack Flaherty? Uh, I don't know. Jordan Montgomery's probably the one that I can rely on the most and I have the most confidence in right now. Definitely isn't Jake Woodford or Steven Matz by any means. I think their lineup's going to carry them. I think their bullpen's going to be really solid. It's going to come down to starting pitching for how far they can go because let's be honest, on paper, their starting pitching does not compare with the other teams at the top. Moving on to the final division now, the National League West, and of course, in fifth place is going to be the bottom-feeding Colorado Rockies. Yeah, they're just bad. There's really no way around it. The Rockies are just straight up a bad team. What do I feel excited about for them? I want to see Chris Bryant play a full season. I really think he just kind of gets underrated because he's hurt so much and he's boring and he plays for the Rockies now. Also really excited to see a full season, hopefully, of Ezekiel Tovar at shortstop. Prospect that I've really liked over the last year or so. There's nothing to get excited about on the pitching side, literally. Like, it's Colorado. There's nothing to get excited about. They're the last place for sure. Fourth place in the National League West, I'm actually going to go with the San Francisco Giants. The Gabe Kapler effect, I think, comes to an end. I think he gets canned this year. I don't want to say that's my bold prediction because I don't think it's even that bold. I just think the Gabe Kapler experiment probably comes to an end this season. They did a lot of stuff well this year, but the team is just overall pretty not good. Like, I love the addition of Michael Conforto and Mitch Hanniger. Hanniger, of course, maybe not going to start the year healthy. He's a little hurt, but I think those were two really good bats. The problem is there's not a whole lot else. I like Tyro Estrada. I like Jock Peterson, but, oh, David Villar is your starting third baseman. J. Davis, Wilmer Flores, maybe Stark come off the bench. Mike Yastrzemski, Joey Bart, like Blake Sable right now on fan graphs is listed as their DH. I don't know who that is. Now, the starting pitching isn't bad. Logan Webb's very good. The rest of this rotation is solid. 
Valley, a bunch of middle of the rotation type guys. So their starting pitching might be their saving grace. And in the bullpen, they do have Camilo Doval, who's got electric stuff. They got the Rogers brothers who were good. I don't know what to do with them. I think they're not that good though. Fourth place. Third place, trendy pick. I think a lot of people are doing this. I've got the Arizona Diamondbacks. We saw them start to play really well towards the end of last year when a lot of that young talent came up. And now they're here. They're ready to play and I expect them to be pretty good. Corbin Carroll, stud, 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 stud. Just watch him play this year. He's going to be one of the most exciting players in baseball. Tell Marte has to bounce back from a bit of a disappointing season last year. I expect the power to come back as well. Jake McCarthy's really good. Christian Walker is a really good power hitting first baseman. Adding Lourdes Gurriel to that lineup is going to bring in a little more average for them. And Gabriel Moreno, don't sleep on him. Good catching prospect. Going to be playing every day. On the pitching side, Zach Gallen, one of the best pitchers in baseball. Kind of ends there. They do have a lot of young good pitchers though. Ryan Nelson's going to be in this rotation. At some point, you're going to see Brandon Fott. You're going to see Dre Jameson get in there too. They have some good arms that are younger, but the older guys like Madison Bumgarner, Zach Davies, they definitely stink. So that's why I'm not going to make a push for them. Their bullpen is still very not good, but I think they are the third best team in this division. I think Corbin Carroll is going to carry in second place. It feels weird, but I'm going with the Los Angeles Dodgers. They're still good. They're still a playoff team. There's no doubt about that, but they are not the Dodgers that we've seen of previous years. They've lost some talent. There's a lot of unknown on this roster and a couple more veterans maybe stepping in. Guys like David Peralta, Trace Thompson going to be expected to do some heavy lifting. You still have Mookie Betts. You still have Freddie Freeman, Will Smith, Max Muncy, and you brought in J.D. Martinez. That top five, one of the best in baseball, no doubt. But you have question marks with Miguel Vargas, James Outman, some rookies that you're depending to do a little bit of work. And you have Miguel Rojas playing every day at shortstop. Like, if anybody can do it with the Dodgers, that's why I'm not doubting them. I'm still putting them in second place and making the playoffs. Just the offense scares me a little bit. Pitching, still phenomenal, still great. Julio Rios, Dustin May, Clayton Kershaw, Syndergaard, and Ryan Pepio. And then the bullpen's money with Evan Phillips, Vesia Gratterall. I'm not gonna name everybody, but you know how good this team is. They're also gonna get Tony Gonsolin back at some point. Team's very, very good. Just not as good as they once were, maybe last year. So I have them in second place. And the team in first place improved incredibly this offseason. Of course, first place is going to be the San Diego Padres for me. How does a team that has Juan Soto, Manny Machado, and eventually is going to have Fernando Tatis on it get better? Well, they add Xander Bogarts to their roster. Yeah. I, I mean, what? What? Their top four when Tatis is healthy is Xander Bogarts, Tatis, Juan Soto, and Manny Machado. It's one of the best four that we see in baseball in a long time. Now, the bottom half of that roster is definitely concerning, but I think the top of the order is so incredibly strong, and I think it will be able to just kind of do a lot of the work for the bottom of this order. Not to mention, the bottom of the order is not bad. It's just they're not as good as these other guys. Pitching-wise, you Darvish, Blake Snell, when Joe Musgrove comes back, really, really good one, two, three. Seth Lugo's looked great this spring thus far. Not striking out guys, but looking very solid. And Michael Waka is a good four, five, along with Nick Martinez. And their bullpen still has Josh Hader who's still just disgusting, not giving up on him after a rough year. Padres are arguably the best team in baseball, and I have them winning the NL West. Now, for the playoff teams, here's what it's going to look like. You know the division winners again. One seed Padres, two seed Mets, three seed Cardinals, but as for the wild card teams, here's what we're going with. Four, I got the Braves. Five, I've got the Dodgers. And six, I've got the Milwaukee Brewers. Yes, I have the Phillies missing the playoffs. They're just, they're glass cannon, something. I had a gut feeling, and I also hate Philly. You know what? I hate Philly. That's why. That's the true reason. But first, I want to go over the awards. Rookie of the year. It's kind of up for grabs, I think, a little bit in the National League. You have Corbin Carroll. You have Jordan Walker. You have Miguel Vargas. You have a lot of guys that are going to be playing every day. Ezekiel Tovar. But I'm going to be a biased Mets fan again and go with Kodai Senga. I mean, he's just going to be pitching every five, every six days for the Mets rotation. But I'm going to be a biased Mets fan. I'm going with Kodai Senga. I, I love Kodai Senga. He's my guy. Throws 99, has the ghost fork ball, which is absolutely disgusting working on that sweeper. But Kodai Senga is going to be on a winning team in a winning environment and being a huge piece of why they're a successful team. So I think Kodai Senga wins it. Cy Young Award, I'm going out to Milwaukee, not for Corbin Burns. I'm going with Brandon Woodruff. Have you guys looked at what he did his last three or four starts last season? He had this like issue where he basically couldn't feel the baseball, started taking, I believe, blood thinners, and all of a sudden was striking out 10 guys a game going eight innings. Brandon Woodruff's healthy, he was already good, and he can feel the baseball again. I'm expecting a Cy Young season from him. As for the MVP, uh, maybe this doesn't make sense because the team's missing the playoffs. Not his fault that they missed the playoffs, but I have Trey Turner winning the MVP. What he did in the World Baseball Classic, what he's done the last few years, he is one of the best players in all of baseball. Going to Citizens Bank Park, the band box that it is in Philadelphia, I expect him to really kind of have his big power surge year. Maybe the average drops a little bit, but I expect big power numbers out of him. He's a beast. As much as I hate the Phillies, I can't hate Trey Turner just yet. I haven't seen him play for them yet, so I'll give him the MVP. Now, let's talk about the playoffs and get it started off in the American League. The wild card matchups are as follows. First matchup I have is the Yankees versus the Angels. This is such a cool scenario. Mike Trout, Shohei Otani playing the Yankees in New York 
would be awesome, would be amazing. But I think that's where it ends for them. I don't think the Angels can beat the Yankees in the three-game series. I think the Yankees will just be too strong with that pitching as long as they're healthy and they're going to improve at the deadline too. Yankees are moving on to the next round. Wild card matchup number two is between the Jays and the Mariners for me. And while I want to believe in the Mariners, the Jays roster is just simply too good. I have them moving on to the DS as well. Now for the National League wild card series, first one is going to be Cardinals versus the Brewers. And I got the Cardinals get knocked out early again by the Brewers this time. Again, talk about pitching. What knocked the Cardinals out last year? The Phillies pitching was just better. What's going to knock them out against this year? The Brewers pitching is just better. If you're going up against Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, and Freddie Peralta in a three-game series, I don't really care what your lineup looks like. Those pitchers are disgusting. The Brewers are going to beat you. The second wild card series is between the Braves and the Dodgers. I don't expect the Dodgers lineup today to look the same as it's going to in the playoffs. I have the Dodgers moving on past the Braves. The Braves are really, really good. This was a really, really hard one. It's honestly messed up that they have to meet each other in the wild card round in my prediction, but that's how it came out. And I got the Dodgers moving on to the DS. For the divisional series in the American League, first one, Guardians versus the Yankees. Guardians, I think, will have a better shot than they have in previous years, but I'm moving the Yankees on to the championship series. That team is just too good. And then we have the Astros versus the Jays, which would be such an awesome series. I want it to happen. This would be incredible. Maybe even the ALCS, it would be better, but I have the Astros moving on. They're the best team in baseball, arguably. They are going to the CS. In the National League, we have the Padres versus the Dodgers, one and two in the NL West. This would be amazing. Amazing for the game of baseball for these two teams to meet up. But I'm going to give it to the Padres again. In a short series with that lineup, everybody healthy in a perfect world, I think they are a better team. And then we have the Mets versus the Brewers, which as a Mets fan, I wouldn't feel great about, but I feel better than going up against the Cardinals because the Cardinals give me nightmares whenever we see them in the playoffs. And of course, I got the Mets moving on to the championship series. It's a draft deck mark prediction video. What do you think was going to happen? ALCS, Astros versus Yankees. I'll even give you a game prediction. We'll get real specific here, but I've got the Astros moving on in six games. I think it's going to be really, really close. The Yankees are a really good team, but the Astros roster top to bottom is just too strong for me on paper. I got to move them on to the World Series. And then in the National League, we got the Padres versus the Mets. And you know what I'm doing here? I'm picking the Padres. Padres beat the Mets last year. I just have this weird complex of you got to prove it to me. And I think the Mets just have to prove it to me a little bit more until I start screaming and yelling about them being World Series champions. So I got the Padres moving on to the World Series in seven games. I think it's going to be incredibly close. That roster just is really, really good. I love the Mets team. I love their roster as well. The Padres give us fits, man. They give us a really hard time. They just kind of have our number. It's not a great matchup for the Mets. Padres moving on to the World Series. So it's now time for the World Series prediction. You've watched 25, 30 minutes worth of video. All for this. Who is going to win the World Series? Can I get a drum roll, please? In a six-game series, winning the 2023 MLB World Series, I have the defending World Series champions, Houston Astros, repeating, winning the World Series in 2023. Their team, their lineup, their roster is just unbelievably stacked. I honestly think some people are underrating them. I'm seeing everyone else's predictions. It feels like nobody's picking the Astros. A lot of Padres, a lot of Jays, a lot of Braves, even a lot of Mets. The Astros roster is off the charts good, and I don't know why more people aren't talking about it. And maybe they are. Maybe I'm not listening to the right people. But the Astros roster, with that pitching, they're built to win another World Series. It's really, really hard to win back-to-back -back World Series. It hasn't happened a lot in the history of baseball, but if there is a team that I feel the most confident in this year to win a World Series, it is the Houston Astros. World Series MVP, let's stay on brand here. I'm going with Kyle Tucker as well. So those are my 2023 Major League Baseball World Series predictions for the season. Remember to subscribe to my new channel, This Is Baseball, where I'll be streaming daily, Monday through Friday, going over daily baseball content, something that I have not done on this channel. This channel is going to stay the same. Nothing's changing here. Follow me on all my social media, at GiraffeNickMark. Links are in description. That's where I'm wrapping up today's video, guys. You know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload, so click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and baseball's back, baby. Let's go, Mets!